and we are live. JT here, and welcome to The Huddle. The Huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I want to take a moment to thank you. Whether you are watching on YouTube or whether you're listening to the audio on the podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me and my special guest today. And here's my friendly reminder to you. The mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's wide open. So my challenge to you is to go all in on this conversation, to remove any distractions and get laser focus on the here and the now. And I guarantee you, you will gain a valuable nugget of wisdom that will not only help you succeed in sport, but more importantly, in the game of life. I've been looking forward to my conversation with my special guest today. Um, we had the opportunity actually to connect a few years ago through social. And uh, from there, you know, I've been able to, to watch his journey from afar and we had the opportunity to finally meet and connect in person at an event recently. Uh, my guest in the huddle today is a Lori Golden Hawks alum. He's also a uh, eight year CFL uh, veteran, uh, but more importantly, the definition of a true Renaissance man. He's got multi-passionate, got lots of things on the go and just really enthused to dive more into his journey to greatness. My guest in the huddle today is Chris Aki. How are you today, brother? I'm doing well, JT. Thanks for having me on. Hey, definitely, brother. Um, before we get kicked off, pun intended, uh, I just want to take a moment to count my blessings. Uh, for me, it's a daily practice. Some days I do it better than others, but I do find the days where I'm most intentional, I'm most consistent counting my, my blessings. I do find those days are filled with a little bit more love, joy, and peace. And I'm a big believer. Biggest blessing you can give anyone is your time and energy. So just want to thank you again for blessing us with some of your time and energy here today, brother. Okay, no problem. Okay. Um, one of the things that uh, we like to do in the huddle is to remind others that life is a game and games are supposed to be fun. So I'm curious, uh, you know, what's an interesting fact about you that maybe a lot of people don't know that you be open to sharing with our community today? Interesting. Um, I don't know. I feel that's tough. I feel there's so, so much. I had to think, like, what is actually, what do I actually think is interesting? Um, interesting fact. I don't know. I'm kind of blanking on this one. Um, you know, let me come back to that. I'm, I'm going to get you that one okay. later on. Okay. Okay. Well, and it's interesting, right? Like, like you talked about, I like how you reminded that what's interesting to us may be interesting to other people. And it was funny because I had a, a, a coaching colleague and a great friend that would say, we all have these things that make us unique and different, you know, our responsibilities to celebrate it. So it's a great reminder that, you know, what makes us interesting, what makes us unique is, you know, um, different. So it's, I love that. Okay. Um, I, I'm curious, you know, as we got kicked off there, you know, I had an opportunity to kind of share a little bit about your journey. And as I was prepping for this conversation, I, I reflected back on that post you made when you decided to end your chapter as a professional athlete and transition to this new phase of your life. And it was interesting because sport has definitely played an important role for you in your life. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. What is a life lesson that you've taken from sport that you find your life uh, that you find yourself applying to your life in this new adventure? I'd say probably one of the biggest things that I've taken away from sport would be just um, adversity, because there's so many times of like, like in life and sports and everything where it's like things aren't going your way. So if you really get to football, hey, you have a plan, but then next you know, hey, this the other team does a completely different game plan than you thought coming into the game. So you just have to pivot and adjust. So I think that's something that I really take from sports and bring it to um, my day-to-day -day life now in the corporate world where it's like, 
sometimes you have a plan that things happen or it's like, hey, this project comes in or this doesn't go the way um, we thought it's going to go or like, hey, we need to get this out in a couple hours. Like, so just be able to work on the fly and then um, also bring in, in the team environment or it's like I've been part of teams my entire life and, and being part of a team, especially being a leader on a team, you learn how to manage uh, different personalities. So you got, yeah. So through football, like I've been playing with guys from all across the world. So, you, and everyone's different. So how I talk to person A is different than how I talk to person B and C. So just being able to uh, know how to apply my leadership in different situations, because there's not, it's not like a one stop shop for leadership. You know what I mean? So it's like how I talk to everyone has to be different. How I lead is different. That's mm -hmm. something I learned throughout my sports career. That's something I really like used in my day to day, my, my job now. Awesome. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, you know, you talked about a couple of themes there and I really love to sort of, you know, flesh those out and, and learn more about that. You mentioned this idea of like being able to handle adversity. So I'm curious, you know, you've been in, you know, you've been blessed to be around some high quality, high performers, right? not only in professional sport, but also now in the corporate world. Do you find the ability to handle adversity? Do you find that although the playing fields are different, do you find that there are some, like if you can handle adversity on the field, you can handle it in the game of life? Yeah, I feel like handling adversity in sports is, is different than in like regular life. Because in sports, like something happens so quick and you need to pivot. And then especially when they tell athletes, you have to have a short, short term memory. Like, hey, if something goes wrong, like, hey, if I have a bad first half, I can't have that in my mind and go have a bad second half. I got to, hey, whatever happened the first half is done, you got to move on. So same thing at work. Hey, if something doesn't go our way the first time, if it, you know what it's over with, how do we make it better? How do we make up from the mistake we made? Mm-hmm. Do you think that I that that like you talked about that short term memory, right? That sort of next play mentality. Do you think it's something that has come naturally for you? Like, is that the ability to have that short memory, that next play mentality, or do you think that's been sort of reps and sets, you know, um, through sport and and yeah, through your journey? I think reps and sets, like uh, in a perfect world, yeah, it should come. You would want it to come naturally, but I think it just it's an honestly repetition. And like, there are times where it's like, for me, I feel I'm my biggest critic. So, hey, I do make a mistake. Hey, I'll pivot past that mistake and make it up. But it's still in my mind, I still think about it, like, damn, I can't believe I made that mistake. So it's about just like learning to be like, you know what? Like, hey, it happened. You can't take it back. How do you move forward? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now with that adversity piece, like you talked about, obviously sport, you know, it, it's, it's a, it's a vehicle, right? Like obviously, you know, physical adversity, being able to push yourself to that real limit as you moved up uh, along your journey, right. From, from, you know, to you sport, then to the professionals uh, ranks, did you find that adversity started to look a little bit different? Like, did you start to realize like it was a bit more mental and the ability to handle mental adversity, emotional adversity, I'm kind of curious your perspective. Yeah, and honestly, it does it does change a lot, especially like in high school. If I bring it up to high school, in high school you're young, like you don't stretch, like you barely work out, and then it's like you don't really have those injuries. And I got to university where it's like, okay, now you're working out. Um, everyone's like bigger, stronger, faster at this point. And then injuries are happening because if you're not if you don't know how to take care of your body, I remember in you know, at Laurie, I used to have like chronic hamstring pulls. Like every offseason, I'd pull my hamstring, so I'd be missing i'd be missing the offseason missing that time with my team so it's like how do you get back from those injuries i actually had a coach tell me like hey maybe this isn't for you mm. you need to look at something outside of football because how often i'd be pulling my hamstring maybe he said it just as like a motivator to me for me to be like okay maybe i need to think about my next approach but it's one of the things that's like you know what i'm not going to let him dictate uh my future that's going to be me so it's like okay now i got to learn how do i get past this injury how do i take care of my body better in order to prevent these injuries and then you get to the pros and then it's like you have a lot of things happening especially you come from a canadian university and now oh you're in the cfl now and you're playing against guys who um been in the league for years and also guys who who've been in the nfl and played at big name ncaa schools so that now it's like you're in a situation where it's like sometimes you might not feel like you you belong right away and you might not get that same opportunity as you should, just being someone that's being transparent as a Canadian player. You might 
we try to put into that box where, hey, you're a Canadian player, you can only play this position. So mm -hmm. it's like you got to go through a lot of stuff. No matter, I remember earlier in my career, no matter what plays I made at practice, I was still like, hey, this is still the Canadian player where it's like we, we might not give them the same same shot. So it's like that's something you have to um, keep going, getting through, it's getting past. Just to, And it's something that weighs on you mentally because you just something that you think, like, what can I do better? Like, what am I doing wrong? And so like you just got to impress the right person to get the opportunity. Mm. It's interesting as you share that. And, and I appreciate you kind of being so honest, open, transparent to share your journey. Like, it sounds like for you, a lot of this idea, a lot of this being able to handle adversity has been this ability to, there's always a way to do it better. And it sounds like for you, it was sort of born and bred by challenging old ways of thinking right or changing challenging other people's beliefs whether it was a coach just saying ah, maybe this isn't for you or whether it's changing these paradigms about what a Canadian athlete can do so it sounds like for you that that drive to hey how can I do it better has really served you along your journey it's really that drive to be the best like it's something I've like I've been a perfectionist ever since I a kid, my parents could tell you stories, even like doing homework. Like I'd be frustrated doing homework. I, I need to get this 100% right. And I would keep doing it and doing it and doing it until it was perfect. So that's always been like, been part of like my identity. So it went related to football, I'd be like, hey, how do I, how can I be the best at this? Like, especially being a first round draft pick. And I was like, okay, now it's like, I know I have these expectations for myself and I know other people do as well. Then um, my first couple of seasons where I was mainly on special teams, a couple defensive plays here and there, but mainly a special team player. I'm like, that's not what I want. This is not this this is not why they brought me in here. So then I was like, okay, how do I work to get on the field as a permanent starter? And I remember in my third year, first opportunity to be, hey, you're the starter, full time starter. I'm playing really well. Then I tore my tricep six games into the season, and that's another thing you have to go through. Where it's like, damn. I'm going into my contract here. I just tore my tricep. What's the recovery going to look like for that? Mm -hmm. I remember I was, uh, recovery was about six, uh, six months. So six months of just like intense, uh, rehab, uh, just to get, just to get better. And then eventually when you get better, you got to trust your tricep the same because mentally it's like, Hey, is it going to, it's going to tear again. But I was able to, uh, kind of battle back from there. And then into my fourth year, um, I had one of my best seasons where I, I came into, uh, I think I finished, uh, I think, top four in the league in defensive tackles. Um, ended up going to the Grey Cup that year with Ottawa, and I ended up having a really good season. Mm. So it sounds like for you, this this idea of settling for average was never, like, you understood that you were deserving of so much more than that, right? Like, average just wasn't your default setting. It's like, I'm always going to strive, you know, for that next level of greatness. Yeah, I feel like I've never considered myself average. And that's something where it's like I've had that confidence where it's like, you know what? Like I I don't think I'm an average person. So why so why act like that? Why put myself in that category of, oh, he's just average? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm curious that 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 desire for that next level of greatness, was that something that you've always had or was that instilled in you by, you know, a great teacher, coach, your parents? you know, a, a mentor, like, I'm curious, where, where did that, like, that ambition and drive come from? I think that's something I've always had. Because if I even, like, bring it back to when I was a kid, like, my parents never pushed me in mm -hmm. anything, like, in school or sports. Like, I've never pushed. Like, I could have quit football at any age, and my parents would have been okay with it. You know what I mean? I didn't have to go to university. My parents would be okay, like, whatever you want to do. So I never pushed. I think it was just just me just being a competitor. I'm just, I'm just really competitive where it's like, I just want to go do that and just be the best. And I remember growing up, I had these, uh, when we moved to moved to Cambridge from Toronto, I had this group of friends that were in the enhanced program. So I was just like, okay, if they're getting A's, I have to get A's. So that was like my drive to, hey, I'm just going to be good at school just because they're good at school. Because that's the time I'm competing with them. So that was like some of those things where it's just like, hey, I'm just going to, try to win at everything I do. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as someone who, you know, it sounds like naturally you have that competitive fire. You got that, that pre kickoff fire in your belly, you know, that that's something that's who you are. 
Um, how important has it been or has it been important for you to surround yourself with other high quality, high performers, people that want to strive as well from greatness? Like, is that idea of like iron sharpens iron? Has that been a theme in your life? Yeah, I think you natu naturally gravitate to um, people who are like minded. Mm -hmm. I feel like if I, I've heard this thing. One of my good friends said at one time, it's like, I can look at your I can look at your five closest friends and tell you who you are as a person. So it's like one of the things, the people I keep in my life, like they're all, they all have the same mentality. They're all high achieving, high achieving people. So mm -hmm. one of the things we kind of just naturally gravitate to each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So I'm curious, one of the unique things, you know, as we started our conversation was, yes, you've had this very abundant, very robust, you know, professional part of your journey as a professional athlete. Um, and then you know, you, you've transitioned into, you know, the business, into the corporate world. How has that, you know, competitive fire, you know, as John Wooden talked about that competitive greatness, how, how has that translated as you've navigated into new worlds? I think it's just the ability to go the extra mile in terms of like, Hey, I'm in a new situation. It's an unfamiliar situation. How do I learn? How do I get better? So I was, for me, like I would spend um, just hours like hey before work after work into the evening on weekends reading like let me read and understand the industry see mm -hmm. where I can get better if I have a project that comes in and I'm working on it it's like hey I can do the typical hey start at nine done at five like you can you can also live that life if you want to but that's not for me especially when it's like I'm trying to get better mm -hmm. and I'm trying to get better as quick as I can so it's like hey there'll be times where I'm working into eight nine p.m where I'm working on a Saturday or Sunday, I'm just doing work in order to, to just establish myself. Mm -hmm. Because when you come into the new environment, you're at the bottom. And it's like, okay, how do I work? It's similar to when you get like, go from university to the pros. Yeah, you're the, you're the top dog in university. Hey, one of the best in the country. You go to the pros, you're a rookie. There, there are guys who've been here for 15, 10, five years already who are established. And now I look at it, hey, I'm at the bottom. How can I establish myself? Let me put in the extra work. Because similar to like even in the, a CFL, um, uh, typical CFL day, your only mandatory time is from 9, 9 a.m. to 1.30. And then I remember my rookie season, I'd do 9 a.m. to 1.30, but then I'd see the veteran guys, they're staying longer. So I'm like, okay, let me let me learn from that. So then I'm like, okay, let me, I got to do what they're doing. So then I would, I would start my day. I'm in there at 7 a.m. I don't leave until 4 or 4.30. Hmm. And I, I would go home, I'd work out, then I'd watch, eat dinner, then I'd watch more film in the evening. So just putting in the extra work to to be the best you can. And that's something that I bring to my my day-to-day -day now. It's like, hey, let me, I don't, how can I get better? If that's reading, if that's reaching out to other other colleagues who, who know more than me just to learn. And that's something I, I do all the time. Hmm. So it sounds like for you, again, that that willingness to go that extra yard right? That willingness to just put in that extra rep, right? Those extra reps and sets has really allowed you to sort of shorten the learning curve, right? Because you're willing to like do the work. Yeah. And I think a lot of people aren't willing to do the work. Uh, okay. Okay. So I'm curious, you know, as we started the conversation, you know, it's, it's interesting. You, you, you're sort of exploring multiple pathways, right? In, in terms of, you know, uh, digital health information, you know, speaking, right? You, you run your own business. Has that all, like, is it, how, how has that journey been where, you know, most people try to focus on one lane, but you're kind of exploring, you know, sort of multiple, like what, what what's that been like? What, how's that journey? It's been good, but it's been, I think why I've kind of like gone through this journey is because I feel like um, you got to be comfortable doing things you're not you're not comfortable with hmm. so that's how i feel like that's how you get the most growth out of a person i'm all about growth how can i get better so i'm like let me do things i'm not i'm not comfortable doing so like things i would just say yes any opportunity i get hey chris can you speak here okay yeah i can do it why not you know what i mean so it's just like from and that's like yeah, i remember growing up like i hate public speaking hmm. didn't like it at all and then when you kind of get into like in university athlete, you kind of get into, um, I don't know, a little bit of like your stardom where it's like people will reach out to you like, 
different youth groups might reach out to you. Hey, Chris, can you come speak to our youth football team? Okay, let me say yes. Then it's like, okay, can you speak at this event? Oh, can you join us on this board? And then it's like, oh, I, mean, I just get to the point where I'm just like, you know what? I'll just say yes. Because being an athlete, you kind of get pushed into like a role model position. And it's like, so I was like, you know what? Let me let me be that person for for kids that look up to me. And the kids, adults, whoever looks up to me, let me be that person. Because I know like I have some I have great things to say. I can help people out. So like, why not like put myself in that position where I know people can reach out to me for help? Mm. So it sounds like for you, this idea of like embracing the discomfort, right? Like that adversity has, has been sort of a really important part of your journey. Yeah, they definitely have been. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm curious of, of, of these experiences. Um, has there been one, you know, in this transition that's really sort of jumped out to you as one where you're like, okay, I'm on the right track. Like this is, oh, this is, this new journey is going to be fun. It's, it's filled with possibility. I'd say all of it. Like all of it's been like a lot of fun. Like um, you mentioned, like the speaking opportunity I do with Flashpoint. So that's like educational speaking. So I'll go up to um, different schools and I'll speak to different uh, different grades on just like on my journey and like what I do now, what I did before, and I talk mm -hmm. about talk about sports, uh, sports and business, and whatever the topic is. So just being out there doing that. Um, I'm recently been asked to be the honorary board chair of St. Luke's. Uh, care home in Cambridge so that's something that I'm going to do so in that position where it's like I'll be doing more speaking engagements or I'll be helping with fundraising and and whatnot so one of the things where it's like I can get out there in the, in my community and help and like community is such a big thing for me just because growing mm -hmm. up uh, my parents uh immigrant parents they had to work um you know low-income jobs and with that it's not like you don't get the perfect work-life balance Monday to Friday you're working you're working like I uh, work on weekends, so you have for Saturday, Sunday. So there'd be multiple times where they weren't able to drive myself and my brother to practice, or we couldn't afford the fee of a sports team. So like my community would kind of band together, but hey, let's pick, let's pick them up, drive them to practice. Let's pick them up, drive them to a game if their parents aren't able to be there. Hey, let's waive the fee for them to play on this team. So that's one of the things where I, like, I love giving back to my community just because of that. Because without them, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that you sort of touched on that sort of community piece there, right? And, and similar to you, you know, having parents that immigrated to this country, it's it's interesting how it sort of creates this ambition and drive because you see that your, you know, your parents that, you know, are hustling and they're grinding, they just take care of basic needs, right? Food, uh, you know, shelter, food, clothes on the back. Um, but like you said, it, it helps you to understand the sense of community, right? It really does take a village. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious for you, like that idea of community, uh, you know, what is it about that sense of community? Is it just literally paying it forward? Um, yeah. What is it about community that, that sense of giving back that really lights you up? I don't know. I just feel like my dad always told me, if you can help someone else, you should help them. So and I feel like, hey, why not help on my community? I was been able to help me, and that's where like um, impulse football started. Uh, my youth football uh, developmental camp. So one of the things was like, how can I give back to my community in the best way I knew how through sports? I remember growing up, um, we couldn't afford to go to camps. Um, so only camp was available, Team Ontario, which would be over a thousand dollars, we couldn't afford that. So I didn't really get the opportunity to go to camps. I remember I went to actually I went to one camp with that Wilfred Laurie when I was in. Uh, that might have been grade six. And I went there and I, I had a great time. So it's like, if I had a great time in grade six, what, 12 years old, 11, 12, um, like, why not be able to give that same same feelings back to my community and to uh, children growing up who may not have the opportunity to go to these camps, go to Team Ontario, go to these other camps in the state. So that's why, that's how impulse football started. It's just like, how can we give back to the community and give kids an opportunity to achieve their goals? I might not be able to, be noticed by say scouts in the states or even scouts are in uh, Canada. It's interesting as you talk about like that impulse football, right? Because it really sounds like you created it because you acknowledged there were some challenges, some obstacles, some barriers that you faced. So it sounds like it was really about removing those challenges, those barriers, and creating more accessibility and opportunities for the next generation. 
yeah. And it ended up being just like, a, it ended up being a mentorship program as well, where it's like, to this day, I have those same athletes reach out to me who are now going to university. I remember I even played against some of them in the, in the CFL, some of them were able to get drafted. So just to, to see their journey. And a lot of guys now, we still talk, like, uh, they're at all different stages of their life, stages of their football career. Some of them realize, hey, football's not for them. Yeah, but still, you still learn so many valuable skills, and we still keep in touch. So mm -hmm. if one thing that I'm always here for them, if I can ever help them transition to a different career or be a reference for them, they know they can always reach out for that. Mm -hmm. It's interesting as you share, right? And you, you talked about this idea of mentorship, right? Which really is about building community, right? Surrounding ourselves with a village. I'm curious, as a Laurie alum, you know, the one thing I think about, whether it's you, you know, whether it's listening to, you know, Kweku Boateng talk about it, whether it's Courtney, it seems like at Laurie, there really is this foundation of, you know, mentorship, of community um, around, like, is that is that something that's was, is very embedded in that, in that Laurier culture? I'm, I'm just kind of curious, because it seems like it's it, a theme. I think it really is. That's something that we've always what we've done like from coach falls to uh coach v to uh coach jeffries is one of those things where it's like hey how how do we get the team out there in the community so that's from like hey we going to we having like a i don't know community day we're going to volunteer we're going to give blood we're going to i don't know volunteer at the um food uh food station or sorry food shelter um uh, just doing things like that where it's like we've always been out in the community and also at Laura, we also have a Letterman Club where it was just like those student athletes who were just like, hey, how student athletes, how do you be in, how how do you uh, how do you make a community better? Like how can you volunteer in the community? It's it's interesting because that is one thing you do notice, right? Like Laurier their athletes, their student athletes are out in the community. They are giving back. And it's not just one. Like that's that's the cool thing. As you say that, I'm thinking you actually see them helping out a lot of different organizations, right? And and they're using their platforms to shed some light on some of the great work that's going out there. Yeah, and it's not just the football team. It's all the all the teams. Huh? I like, there's been so many times where it's like, hey, we run an event. Hey, with, hey, soccer team, basketball team. Hey, let's all go volunteer together. Mm -hmm. Do you think that... <sighs> As, as an alum, do you think that the previous generations, like you talked about, you know, interesting enough today, I, I posted something around uh, Coach Galloway talking about the impact Coach Jeffries had on him, right? So is, and you know, I think back to just hearing these uh, stories, right, of other people like, you know, uh, Shamad Chambers talking about how Hugh Lawson had this impact on him. Like, is it just, is that idea of like playing it forward, that mentorship, like, I guess I'm just sort of fascinated by how deeply ingrained it is in the culture. Yeah, it's ingrained. I just look at it like, why not help someone out? Like, if I can help someone out, hey, like one of my old teammates, like someone, I'm not even, even like guys I connect with now, Laurie, like, I don't know. I haven't been, a, I haven't played at Laurie since, what, 2015, 2014, 15? So it's just like, some of these kids now, like, I didn't play with them, but it's like, if they reach out to me, it's just like having that like network. Hey, do you need, Hey, do you want to do some training? What advice? Do you, they ask me, hey, do you have any drills for me? Do you have any advice for me? I'm going to the process. I'm going, um, I'm getting ready for the CFL Combine. I'm getting ready for East West Bowl. Like, what advice do you have for me? And they just know they can reach out. Mm -hmm. And, like, now that I'm retired, I'm now I'm living in Toronto. I'm still, I'm only an hour away from um, from Laurier now instead of being all the way in Montreal. So now I, I plan to be coming back to school more. If like, hey, let me volunteer coach, like, let me come out and speak. Let me come guest coach for a day. In any way I can help out the program, because it's like, why not help these kids achieve their goals? If that's through sport, if that's outside of sport, I want to. Mm -hmm. I love <clears throat> I love that question, right? Like, why would you not help, right? Why would you not support someone along their journey? You know, it's really evident that you're someone who wants to help, who wants to serve, you know, others along their journey. Do you ever find it? challenging because again you, you're you're multi-passionate you have a lot of um you know you have a lot of irons in the fire do you ever find it a bit of a challenge of knowing when to say yes to help versus oh you know what i'm i i'm not able to i'm, I'm kind of curious i think you can always find time if yeah. you want for stuff that you want to want to do 
Yeah. But also, it's, hey, say I'm not the right person I should connect with. I can connect them with someone else. You know, I mean, they, they might come in this evening, you know what, like, hey, you know, what? a friend of mine would be better for you to connect with. Because sometimes just being that, like, I don't know, that third party, that could be like, you know what, it's not me, but hey, let me connect you with who you should connect with. Hmm. So, so it sounds like it's important as a leader, right? We talk, we're talking about leader that sometimes you have to sort of be aware on, you know, a- am I actually able to help and support this person? You know, am I the best person that being able to sort of ask yourself that question to discern that is an important part of leadership? No, it definitely is. Sometimes you gotta, you gotta delegate and say, it's not all going to be me, but Hey, if someone else can help me out, then they will. And, and how like, um, how my network is, especially my good friends are like, Hey, whatever we need from each other, we're always there. We're always available. Always find a way. Mm-hmm. Um, how important has that sort of lesson on like delegation, right? Of, of empowering others, right? Like it sounds like for you, that theme is, you know, you're willing to open up, right? Your network to, to other people. How important has that been in terms of the ability to kind of, you know, delegate, empower others, you know, um, to help others as well? I think that's so important because I think any good leader will do that where it's like, it's not only you doing all the work. Like, yeah, sure. Could someone do one thing? Could I do every task that I get at work? Yeah, of course I could. But also it's like, why not empower my team, uh, give them the opportunities to develop and grow by giving them work. And it shows that I trust them as well. It's like, I trust you to do this because you're knowledgeable. You can run with this. Mm. Curious your thoughts on this. How important, you, you said the key word there, like trust, right? It's like showing people that you trust them, that they that they can handle that. How important has that sort of idea been that that giving trust to show people that you they have the gifts, the talents, and abilities to execute? I think that's super important because it's like you're you're building them up because once and you're building their confidence in their work as well. So if like if I trust you to do something, they know okay, they probably do some good work if I trust them to do it. So then it's like you're just kind of empowering them from there. You, they they get you get to see their growth within, say, sport or even within the organization, and then you get to see see their confidence. And then from there, it's like, why not? I want to be able to elevate this next person and for, continue for them to get better and better. Then they're going to do the same thing to someone else. They're going to mm-hmm. continue to elevate the next person. So why not? Then from there, you grow a fantastic team where you have so many people who are confident in the work they do, and they all trust each other. Then it has that team environment where it's like, hey. I know it's five o'clock, but we have this assignment. Can we work on it? It's like, okay, you know, now the team is uh, so cohesive where it's everyone trusts each other, everyone likes each other, and they're going to work on this together. And and from your experience, as that trust builds, as people become more emotionally invested in the team into the success of others, and as we elevate together, what what have you seen is like the benefit when that happens? So sorry, can you repeat that question? The benefit of yeah, just just when you notice that the trust builds, you know, when people start to work together towards that collective vision, you know, or, or do you notice anything what happens in terms of the team's ability to achieve their goals? Yeah, when the trust and the confidence build, then you get different viewpoints of how to do something. Because mm-hmm. when it's, I feel like when it's like the confidence and trust isn't there yet, you only really get one kind of one side of thinking thinking of things or like how the problem is you don't really get the full picture of other avenues where you can solve the problem because then from there if the tr- if the trust and the confidence in there that person might this might be scared to speak up but they they probably have a fantastic idea they just don't want to be wrong and it's okay to be like there are times where hey, i have an idea where it's like you know what hey thanks for your idea but that's not what we're thinking of where there are times where i have an idea where it's like you know what this is great let's run with it but I think I've just my like my team, uh, my boss is still with me, like the confidence and I know that she trusts me. So when I have an idea, I can bring it to her. Mm. It, it, it's interesting, right? Like that that ability to share thoughts, to share ideas, right? To give feedback. You know, it's interesting how in order for people to feel comfortable to do that, there has to be a high level of trust. No, oh, definitely there has to be. Yeah. And, and as someone who's, you know, transitioned from the world of professional sport, you know, to the corporate world, um, how important is that 
Um, and, and I'll give you context. One of the things, whenever I have the opportunity to speak, I, I, I share that this willingness to be open to diversity of thought is a superpower in 2024. Like from your experiences, you know, is that something that you're finding true in, in your journey? So diversity of thought? Yeah, just being open to new and new and different ways of thinking and just ideas. Yeah, I think you have to be because it was like, there's more than one way to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. And then like, and I feel like that's why you need a team around you to give you different ideas because you might have an idea and you think it's perfect. Like usually every, every idea I have, I think, I think it's great. You know what I mean? But suddenly I'll have an idea and I'm sending someone on my team or a different team be like, hey, can you poke holes in this for me? Like, because this sounds great in my mind, but I want to see, I want to get someone else's lens on this. So I think it's good to have, to be open to different um, different opinions. Because obviously there's different ways to do so. Do you have to accept everything, every feedback you get? No. You could obviously, you have the autonomy to do what's best, but it's like, you just, if you see different, see and hear different viewpoints, it definitely helps you um, complete different tasks and um, see, just have a different viewpoint on a lot of things, a lot of issues that happen. Mm -hmm. It's interesting as you talked about, I love that analogy of you like, hey, can you poke holes in this? Like it speaks to that willingness to, you know, your open-mindedness, right? Your coachability in the game of life, because it does take an ability to handle some adversity because I'm sure that you probably felt like it doesn't feel warm and fuzzy, right? When people necessarily poke holes, but mm -hmm. you know, it's that ability to sort of handle that adversity is what makes you a stronger, more powerful leader. Yeah, no, it definitely does. Like, Hey, like you can poke holes on, Hey, like, I might not like everything you do. <laughs> yeah. hey, I'm going to understand. Okay. This is how you see it. And I might not agree with you, but I still understand. Okay. This is why you see it this way. Yeah. Yeah. So it sounds like, again, that, that idea of empathy, right? Like being able to see the world, you know, in the shoes of another or through another person's lens. Yeah, no, it's definitely important. And like good skill set athletes have when they're ready to transition is you brought up earlier, coachable. Like if you if you come into any environment, any new environment, and just be like, "Hey, I'm here to learn," then it's like from there you can you can do so much. You can do so well in whatever industry you want to transition to. And if they're still playing sport, the same thing. It's like, "Hey, go to a situation. What team you go to? Say it's a new team. It's like, "Hey, I'm here. Hey, you need me to play whatever position you need me to play. I'm here to learn, and I'll do whatever it takes to be be able to contribute to this team." Mm -hmm. It's it's interesting, like you said, that openness to, hey, saying yes and to any new opportunity or that willingness to, how can I best help the team get to where they want to go? It sounds like whether we're talking the football field, whether, whether we're talking, you know what, in your family life, whether you're talking professional life, those are ones that it's powerful. Yeah. And I feel like when you get something, you might not know what you're doing. Just <laughs> say yes. You'll figure it out. You have just... You, you're going to be resourceful enough to be like, you know what? I have no clue what this is, but I will get this back to you. I will figure it out and I'll get it back to you. Yeah. Do you think that that comes with a certain level of common confidence in your own skin? Like the ability to be like, I don't know the answer, but I'm going to do my best to figure it out. Yeah, no, it definitely is. <laughs> it resonates with me. Uh, and the reason is it reminds me of my early time when I was in education for 15 years as a young as a young emerging teacher, it was like, you know, we try to fake it to make it like, I don't know the answer, but I'll fake it where it's like, after a while, after years, I just start to learn. I don't know the answer, but I'm going to work to figure it out. And I'll get back to you on that one. Yeah, it's all you can be. <laughs> yeah, I don't know this, but it's like, hey, I'll get it back to you. Yeah. But there's been times at work where it's like, hey, I've done something. And it's like, no, I have no clue what this is, but I will figure it out and I'll get something back to you. And I do. I'll figure it out and I get something back to you. Yeah. Okay. Well, brother, I, I want to be respectful of your time. Um, and as I said, you know, at the start of our conversation today, uh, one of the things I was really inspired by was just how you've been able to, you know, seamlessly, you know, pivot, you know, and transition into this new adventure in your life. If there is someone that is thinking about embarking on a new adventure, you know, maybe it's in their personal life, maybe it's, you know, their professional life, you know, if someone just said, you know, Chris, you know, what words of wisdom can you give me that can help me along my journey just to sort of 
make the transition a little bit easier. What, what words of wisdom would you offer them? Words of wisdom, I'd say, um, don't feel out of place. Like they're, I feel with athletes, like just cause they're not familiar with it, say a certain industry, they feel like, oh no, they can't do it. But it's like, no, they can, the skills that they possess are transferable into a lot of industries. And a lot of like managers, directors, VPs will want to hire someone like them just based off the skill set that sports give them. So I feel like don't be afraid to reach out to your network. Don't doubt yourself where it's like, oh, there's no way I could do this. I could do this job. I can do this. I can do this role. Just have the confidence in yourself because you've gone so far in your life having confidence and believing in yourself. So why not have that when you when you pivot into a different industry? So it sounds like that old idea, like, you know, sort of trust that process, as we said, right? Like believe in yourself, trust that the process is going to unfold. Yeah, I'd say that. I 100% say that. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm curious, you know, you talked about a lot of different things that, you know, you're working on, a lot of different, you know, causes and missions that you're passionate about. Um, is there anything that we can help and support you? And is there anything where, you know, to learn more about the things you're growing? Um, I think I'll be posting probably a lot more on LinkedIn coming up with a lot of the uh, initiatives I'm doing. So, hey, just be there to support it any way we can, especially with um, St. Louis Care Home. Doing, we've been doing a lot of fundraisers. So just uh, maybe be involved with that, any reshares or even hey, attending any events would be great. Yeah, no, definitely. And, and again, more than happy to share a little bit and really enthused to kind of see how this, you know, this journey, you know, how your journey continues to unfold, but also kind of see, you know, this new journey of St. Luke's, how, how would that unfold? Yeah, no, I'm excited for it. One of the things where it's like, Hey, it's a new opportunity. Why not? When they approach me, I was like, you know what? Hey, yes, I'll do it. Yeah. Um, Chris, I, I want to take a moment to acknowledge you. Uh, I want to acknowledge you for the great man you are, you know, the great son, the great mentor, but more importantly, the amazing human being you are. You know, the one thing I've really come to appreciate about, again, observing your journey from afar, you know, getting to actually meet and connect with you live and in person is just how open you are to, to new opportunities, right? And and really starting to understand that there's lots of different chapters in your life and, and really it's just about embracing the discomfort of new chapters. So just want to thank you again for reminding us of that and just want to tell you how much we appreciate you. No, JT, I appreciate that, man. It's been great connecting with you and uh, meeting you in person. It's been awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, folks, Chris dropped so many valuable nuggets of wisdom that will not only help you succeed in sport, but more importantly, in the game of life. But as I like to remind you every week in the huddle, knowledge is potential power. It's the consistent and focused application of great knowledge that actually creates greater results in your life. And my challenge to you today is to take one of these valuable nuggets of wisdom that Chris shared and go apply it to your life today. And as I like to remind you every week in the huddle, you are deserving of greatness. You are worthy of greatness. You are greatness. And my only ask from these conversations, if it resonated with you, if it touched your heart, if it inspired you to think differently, then please share it with a friend, a loved one, a teammate, just someone you think that would benefit from listening to these positive, inspiring, and empowering ideas. The more people we have listening, understanding, and applying these simple principles to their life, the more blessed this world will be. As always, love having these conversations with you in the huddle. Have a blessed rest of your day, everyone.